You know this and I know this, art approvals can be such a slow and tedious process. This is why we've added automations around text messaging and emails. Check out the link down in the description below. You can get started with Printavo on a free trial to see how this works or be able to start using it on our premium plan. Welcome to Oklahoma City! <laughs> Hey, why don't you say, hey, we're here in Oklahoma City. Hey, we're here in Oklahoma City at Oklahoma City Shirt Company. No, you just say Oklahoma City. What's up, guys? Bruce from Portavo here. We are in Oklahoma City at Oklahoma Shirt Company! All right, hopefully they'll make that look good. None other than Mr. Justin Lawrence. What up? I think I've been trying to make this little meetup work for a while. Thank you for making the time. I know you're busy. You got your son making mock-ups and quotes yep. to, to kill the time real quick. Aaron, thank you. Yep. We appreciate you. All right, let's take a look. What do you got to show us? Let's go, man. Come on inside. We are, uh, this is our traditional lobby. We're under a little bit of a remodel right now. When you, we just have warehouse spaces in downtown Oklahoma City, and so because we have those, it gives us the freedom to change things around as we see fit. So coming soon, this will be a new retail experience, but for now, uh, we just, this is where customers come in and pick up their stuff, and this is where the magic starts. Wow. Wait, so these are all boxes to be picked up? Yeah, so we we needed a clever way of, we have a will call, and this is this represents like some boxes. This is, again, doing something with what we have in front of us, you know, and it not being fully programmed out. So we thought that customers come in up here, they pick up their orders, they have a big order, they go to the back and pick it up. Mm -hmm. But this just makes for a nice little something to go into. And if it's a small order, people can just pick their stuff up. What What do you want to turn this into? Yeah, so when this is, when this is done, um, our customer care team um, and art department, which is back there, that will be, we'll build out offices and up here, this will be a programmed out retail experience. So we'll have shirts up on the wall here and we'll have shelves where people can buy things and look around and have trinkets that you can pick up here or you know around Oklahoma City. Just a, a nice retail experience that's more than just coming in, picking up your shirts and leaving. Got it. And does that play along with the monthly, the shirt of the month thing that yeah. you guys have been doing? No, shirt of the month will have its own corner. You know, okay. right now, like this represents some of our past shirt of the month designs and people can come through and pick out what they'd like. And uh, if they need one, we go grab it for them. Um, but yeah, we more retail focused forward uh, shirt lines that we'll drop, um, promo products, you know, just whatever customer, whatever customer comes in, we want them to be able to get whatever they need. The church of schools, nonprofits ordering their t-shirts, the downtown traveler looking for a souvenir, um, the later in the evening party crowd that's coming through and just maybe looking for a gift or something else, but whatever we can offer. We hope Sweet. To have it. This is a, this is a conference room. This is my office. Uh, this is again like we have a door right here that doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the middle of our retail um, so again this is this will be a rearranged we don't have a great space to meet with customers right now so that's what saying is doing uh, just a little less than ideal but soon it's coming customer care team we're rebuilding out our production on the south side and we had more store space over here that we're building out as a tattoo shop. So everything is kind of condensed and compressed right now until those projects finish and then everything will land in its new home. So yeah, DTG is happening right here. Our art department. <laughs> Love hey the sign. Bye. Hey. Hey. <laughs> We're live. We're on Instagram live. This is Maple. Hi, Maple. Maple syrup. Close Maple syrup. Shop gags. Shop. We got geckos. I hope they're out right now. They're probably not. Oh, here's one. Yeah, Look at his head. Osco and Squeegee. You ready? Yeah. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. There you go, oh big dog. Oh my gosh, dog. he's big. Big dog. 
Jurassic Park. Whoa. Shop also, lizard. Also, another one over here, but he's a tiny boy. I could probably eat this one. There it is. There it oh. is. And this is a climby, jumpy boy. That's a thick ass boy. Yeah, he's gotten a lot bigger. He was in the press? He was in the warehouse? Uh, Yeah, they found him like between the warehouse. He was outside and it was like, it was like 38 degrees and he was dying. Oh. But we got him. We got him. We, we found him like right before he went to the dryer. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We used to find him in the ink. Yeah, they end up in the ink sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, we got to him luckily. So yeah, that's our, his name is Little, Little Marsh. Is he mixing the white? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we actually have all of our ink hand mixed by geckos. By lizards. It's really one of the, <laughs> it's really one of the secret sauces here at Open Church. Yeah. <laughs> They're a uh, sticky feet, add a nice texture. We had a salmonella outbreak a few years ago, but <laughs> we have new SOPs to prevent that. This is Tess and Madison. Say hi, Tess. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi, Tess. Or wait, Madison. Hey, Bruce. Tess? No, Tess, Maddie, is, I'm oh. Tess. Tess is going to have a baby in. I am. <gasps> Get that BB on camera. Like a week. BB Bean! Doesn't have a name yet. Should we name, Take a poll? name it right now? Her? Take a poll. Yeah, comment down below if you. <laughs> and like and subscribe. Yeah, yeah. congratulations, Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And she'll have the baby today. If we get this to 100 likes. For real. Uh, again, our embroidery department was over there. We have condensed, so we have these machines running, and then these machines will come online uh, whenever they need to <laughs> Well, how do you deal? Oh, okay, so these are the labels of what exactly is inside. I just saw the super neon label, but they're different. Yeah, so they're we use that as call outs. So we have like, if, it, if there's embroidery or vinyl, or if there's, where's the, we have, I'll show you all those stickers across the street. Yeah. Good morning. So have you been into embroidery and screen printing and vinyl and everything else for the whole time or? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, you know, early on, you start with screen printing in your garage and then you're like, crap, I got to do embroidery. So you either outsource it or you get a little machine. We have had embroidery and gotten rid of it and had embroidery and gotten rid of it. The same is true with DTG. We had DTG, got rid of it, had DTG, got rid of it. And it comes down to support. Like if you're gonna have a product offering, you have to support it well. If you don't support it well, then it's just never gonna do what you want it to do, no matter how much you want it. And so we found that you have to support embroidery well, and you have to support DTG well. And if you do those things well and consistently, then you'll have a good product. So you think you'll consistently keep it now yeah. and maintain it? Hello. Oh my, hello. How's it going, dudes? You got any pro print tips for us today, uh, Jared? You're not printing fast enough. Print, print faster. Print faster. Print, print faster. faster. Try to go faster. <laughs> Usually it's the tip. Print faster. Uh, production. This is where all the magic happens. The screen should be good. Yeah, uh, Jaren's uh, brother. There's a rule. With, there's no skateboards in our shop because Jaren's brother was riding his skateboard through. Baylor, say hi. This is Baylor. Baylor was riding oh, his Baylor. skateboard through. And uh, knocked that computer off the uh, off the thing. It oh, works God. though. Still works. <laughs> Still breathes. Still works. <laughs> Powered by Printable. <laughs> uh, yeah, production. Six automatic presses. Workhorse products. Uh, we we have four on this side of the building, and then we have our other two on this side of the building. Manual press over there. Um, yeah, check it out. Oh, it looks like some inside labels for the Smashing Pumpkins. That's pretty cool. That is super cool. So, uh, how did you scale up? Obviously, you started in your garage with uh, six autos. That's no small journey. We have seven autos now. You follow. We got another print shop in you follow uh, down. You know, that's where that's where we're going surfing next. Oh, ah, okay. Uh, yeah. So you start in your garage with a press, and you take an order, and you take good care of people, and you keep taking good care of people and then when you take good care of people they tell their friends and when those people tell their friends that you took good care of them and their friends then their friends start calling you and then the next year when they reorder 
they call you again and you take good care of them. So you just keep taking good, that's any business though. Take good care of people, they will come back to you. So that's all we've done. We keep taking good care of people. When we make mistakes, we own it and we're honest about it and we do the right thing. Um, and yeah. So where does, uh, does everything get dropped off here? Yeah, oh, so shipping and receiving warehouse is down there. Uh, so we can come this way. What's the van for? Delivery? Deliveries, live screen printing, pop-ups, uh, mobile billboard. Mo mainly it gets, it gets used a lot for when people that work here uh, need to move. <laughs> Hey Justin, can we borrow the van? Uh, it's <laughs> employee pretty. perks. Yep, employee perks. So this is the tattoo shop that's going to be moving uh, next week, and then you see productions over there. Uh, our shipping and receiving is over here. So when that falls, they will communicate. Welcome to the dungeon. This is awful. This has. <laughs> this is Tess. She's our uh, warehouse. She's hey, Tess. Breaking news. She's going to be soon our warehouse manager. Ooh, Nobody knows you. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, this is uh, shipping, receiving. So we get all of our raw products here. We have teams that rebox them, um, prep them for production. And, and then we also house blank goods here uh, for a few of our contract customers. Um, we house our our own retail, like for shirt of the month, um, our shirt of the month products, all my products, and then our fulfillment happens back here: folding, packaging, and pad printing. So yeah, this is our uh, fulfillment team, uh, folders, and then pad printing. We do a lot of pad printing. Got it. Lots of pad printing. So you went with these versus uh, Rapid Tag or? Yeah, we, well, we have, uh, we have the Rapid Tag and we found that for high volume, uh, using a pad printer, it you have to, it's kind of one of those things you have to go all in with. The ink is kind of fussy, the plates are hard to make, but once you, uh, once you get a plate made, it's, I mean, it's a dream. Like you, it's it's so much faster and then as soon as you smash it it's done you know it takes no time to dry and there's a reason why it is the golden standard for private labeling but again it it's very specific for private labeling the plates you know they you're either going to make a plate yourself or spend a hundred bucks every time you need a plate made um, but again for the it only works for a few of our special types of customers if we didn't have those customers these machines wouldn't make sense got it so you bought them to accommodate them. Yeah, I bought one. Uh, when I picked up this account, um, I I got one pad printer, then we found another one. Then Stephen Farrag actually was like, hey, Justin, we got like three of these things lying around. Um, you should probably take them from us. And so, well, we gave him some money. And But uh, yeah, those came from Campus Inc. Um, and yeah, again, because they, ended, they had them and you have to have a very special customer for pad printing. But if it makes sense, um, it's the best. So we like it for um, if you're just doing a private label um, and then leaving the tag in, it works really well. There are some accounts, so for some customers, like these guys, you know, it makes a lot of sense to do, oh no, not them. How do you make a plate? Right, so is the ink sitting here and then it... Yeah. Yeah, Koi, are you about touches to print? Touches it and then touches the garment, thank so, you. Are you about to print? Okay. Yeah, check this out. So sometimes where it works well is like, you'll do a, you know, just a size run. So, but mm -hmm. if you're going to do 12 of these, it's silly because the amount of setup and prep and ink prep and all the things. But if you're going to do hundreds of mediums, hundreds of smalls, hundreds of uh, larges, extra larges, then uh, this is the best. Um, it's better than screen printing. It's better than pat. It's better than transfers. It's better than uh, screen printed transfers. But those things get pretty close to doing the same thing. It just, and they're a lot easier. So yeah, if you find yourself in a situation where you do have to um, do a lot of in-size tag runs, you can get creative. You know, like for us, we've said, oh, we can do this one. 
and then we have a paint pen that we'll go through and strike like oh that's the small one that's oh, the medium that's the large gotcha. on the shirt don't use a sharpie you have to use a special pen because it bleeds through but it is a way of you can run all of the shirts with the same um pad tag and then and it doing a hand marked thing gives it more of a craftsman you know handmade type feel and then once people have once they've bought their shirt and it goes in their closet, they don't really, they're not concerned about size anymore. So really this is most important when it's in retail or when they're picking up their shirt. So a, you can get, we have found that a lot of our customers will be okay with the pad printing manual strike. Cool. Very cool. So it's really a volume thing. Definitely a volume thing. I mean, is there a certain number? Like, you know, a thousand shirts, 10,000 shirts and there's... Um, it makes sense for small runs if you have large runs to support it. If, it, if you're only using, it's kind of like the rapid tag or it's like screen printing. It takes a certain amount of time to design something, make a stencil, set it up, uh, test it, run it. You can make screens faster than you can make plates. Got it. Um, and so, yeah, if you have a rapid tag or if you have a, even those platens that you can print the image and the shirt at the same time. The truth is the fastest way, if you're doing small runs, like a hundred pieces or below, you should probably be doing screen printed transfers. That's the fastest, their shelf life, they're easy, one person can do it, there's not a lot of R&D. Um, but if you're doing consistent volume runs for a contract or a wholesale account where you're having to private label, or even if you put the same logo on the sleeve the same time over and over and over and over again, or if you do like it under label things or inside, or just small decorations that you're gonna be replicating a lot, pad printing's a great solution. Cool. So everything's sorted, boxed. This is also being shipped out of here. Mm -hmm. How do you get stuff from here to the other side? Is yeah, so right, yeah, right now it blows because there's a tattoo shop right there. So mm -hmm. as soon as that ta ta tattoo shop moves, these walls right here fall. This opens up, and now we can transport pallets of raw goods over to production. Got it. And our freight docks and everything are down there where production is. So we will now have a better flow where we'll have raw unproduced goods come in here they'll get reboxed they'll go this way um, miscellaneous decoration like the, our embroidery vinyl heat pressing direct to garment all of that will move right over here on the other side of this wall and then everything will just be much more streamlined right now it sucks because if we get a, a pallet of like if john comes over here to get a pallet of shirts that we're going to print today um, sometimes the weather isn't always a balmy 85 and sunny. Sometimes there's snow on the ground, sometimes there's ice, sometimes there's water, and it just sucks because then they open the garage door, they take all of the raw goods out in the elements, they're fighting a, a dolly or a, a cart or a freight dolly, and it's just, it sucks. And so we're really looking forward to being able to take things indoors right over to production. Got it. Shirts counted in here, then wheeled over here. And then, uh, dark room. Yep, dark room. We'll go in right here, actually. Okay. Wrap it we don't use. Manual printing. It's still very much a place for manual printing. Is that for sampling, or is it for the small runs? Small runs, another press, another operator. Surprise! Chase, this is Bruce <laughs> from Printavo. Hey Chase. Oh. He wants to show everybody what we're up to. Thanks. Uh, XTS is our, uh, is the way. You can see that we are out of space in here. Um, we have the darkroom remodel that's coming. They get an upgrade as soon as miscellaneous decoration and the warehouse. When that wall falls, we're basically gonna take this area and extend it. So screen stencil making happens in here. They get coated there um, and then they're stored in here and then Chase makes the screens, exposes them and then rinses them out and then they go right out this door to the production floor. And then when production's done with them, they come in on this door over here. Did you always start with the kilo or did you switch around to anything else? No, we had a, uh, so we started, we went straight from film to uh, XTS. And we were looking at, this was probably three and a half years ago that we picked up the XTS and we're super happy with it. Um, I wish we had another one. It just, when you have one of something, you have nothing, you know? So when that thing goes down, it's crippling. 
Um, we are very happy with the Kiwo XTS. Every piece of equipment has its issues, um, and so like anything else, when you're making a decision about what piece of equipment you should use, the way that the company supports you and communicates and handles it is, is paramount. And Kiwo and their team, is, they're very helpful and very willing to help us whenever they can. Um, yeah, and then reclamation. New or two? Didn't you just get this recently? No, this is actually like probably two or three years old. But oh, yeah, okay, so yeah. new-ish. But we like the Lotus Holland a whole lot. Um, it's you know our volume. We process probably 250, 300 screens a day, and this is the this is the machinery that keeps up with it. And so our process is dirty screens come in. screens <laughs> but whatever she was doing she knows she's gonna handle that but they come through ready to go and then here's the finished ones and these are ready to go uh, these will air dry then get blown out and then they go right back into here so that they can get coated and processed again this is how many dirty screens that we have sorry this is how many dirty screens that we have we process them we just got it we keep them going so that's her full-time job and it's this is as pleasant as we can make it, you know? There's air conditioning in here, there's exhaust in here, there's not a lot of chemicals, you know? Our eyes aren't burning, and she, so there's a there's a sustainable way to do it, and Lotus Holland is, is definitely the horsepower behind that. Very cool. And then, last but not least, on the ink side, so. Yeah, ink world, so this is our library. Um, we fought for a long time, like, I, I love the idea of being a, like, having set colors that we use, you know. Here's our 32 colors that we use, our crayon box of sorts, pick from these colors. And we found over time, like, when you get, when you start getting larger and you have more commercial clients, making the jump and you just PMSing everything is the way. And when you run out of ink, you make more, and when, and you try to, I try to tell people to be good, like, hey, when you're standing here, and somebody comes in and they're calling for this like 360 and they call and then but we also have this remnant like 376 we all know that we can take this 376 put it inside of this 360 blend it up and look we've just saved this unusable amount of ink in this and the color's not going to be tinted all that much and so it's a way to be clever that we so we just tell our ink mixer like hey if you see opportunities to combine like this 187 with 186 we don't need nobody cares I mean some people care but for all intents and purposes these could be the same and you would never know the difference um yeah ink mixing so when our uh, we have a pre-production team that just that gets the inks and screens ready for the press ops for what's coming next and so they will they prep first thing in the morning and just get everybody's job so when they look they have their next job that's on deck uh, so that they just have the least amount of downtime possible Got it. so they just start an hour or two or something before yeah yeah what time does the shop open? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. And they end earlier? Or? Yeah, they end at 3, 3.30. Are you doing the four-day or five-day? No, five-day work week. We, we talked about four days, but man, a 10-hour day yeah. in a screen printing shop when the heat, I mean, it's 9.40 a.m. right now, and it's already 85 degrees. So in Oklahoma, um, you know, we bring in as much air as we can and air movement, but it's still, I try to keep it below 90 in here, but it doesn't matter what you do. Sometimes it still gets above that. Um, exhausting your dryers. My hope is, is I think eventually I can add another, an additional 25 or 30 tons of air in here. And hopefully we could keep our door shut and it can be kind of a closed um, environment. That's the next, that's one of the next things that I'm looking at in here is what we can do to just make it even more comfortable for the hardest workers that we have in the business of so these guys. Got it. Awesome.
So what do you feel like? I mean, obviously space changing, you talk about AC, any other things that you'd like to change or improve that over the next year? Yeah, we're moving, um, we're gonna do a lot better with wayfinding down here. Again, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do manufacturing in downtown Oklahoma City because we have just this amalgamation of buildings that we've put together. When one becomes available, we have to get it as we continue scaling. I think we're done scaling as far as production size. I'm not buying more presses. Like if we get bigger, we'll just go to more shifts. Um, and so now it's really, how do we set, settle in here and take good care of what we have? Um, so next projects are just like building upgrades and wayfinding and customer, we're gonna do will call and pick up out here. What's wayfinding? Wayfinding like, hey, customer order pickup, go this way. Hey, customer entrance over here, employee uh, entrance. Okay. Because we have customers that park back there or park here or park up there and it's kind of chaotic. And um, I think that there are some strategies we can do to make the overall customer experience and uh, geographical experience a lot better, uh, just with some signs. And so those things will be going up um, here shortly. Okay. All right, guys, this is Justin Lawrence. Thanks so much for being able to hang of out course. today. Bruce, thanks for coming to Oklahoma. All right, you going to the lake? It's at this afternoon. All right. This is Oklahoma Shirt Company. Make sure to follow him. Follow Justin Lawrence at Justin Lawrence. Yeah, Justin T. Lawrence, uh, Oklahoma Shirt Company. Uh, wild boys. Thanks, guys. See you in the next one.